Okay, and we are live. So welcome everybody to uh, what's going to be a twice weekly live stream. Uh, I'm Barry Chandler, co-founder of StoryForge. I'm joined here by my co-founder, Haley Boning from StoryForge. And we're going to do this every uh, twice a week uh, for as long as is needed. We're in uncertain times. And uh, we're going to come here and uh, hold virtual office hours uh, with our coffee and our teas and uh, <laughs> chat about uh, the changes that are facing businesses right now and how we might be able to help address them, knowing that it is no longer business as usual. Um, Haley, what should people know about StoryForge before we start? Ah, so StoryForge, we are a, um, a virtual agency. So we're very fortunate that this location agnostic lifestyle that we're all having to work in is something that we're accustomed to. Uh, we've worked over the last six years with hundreds of businesses of all different sizes, different industries and in different countries and different time zones, um, all trying to do one thing. And that is to get everyone and everything in their business on the same page so that they can build brands that matter, so they can reach the goals they want faster and with less stress. So we've been very fortunate to work with some amazing business entrepreneurs, business founders, many of whom we have been on the phone with uh, for the last couple of weeks talking about this new world that we're in. Um, so that's a little bit about StoryForge. Great. So we'll take questions uh, from anybody who joins these streams via Facebook or YouTube anytime. Feel free to type your comments in or uh, your comments or your questions. Or if you've got any that you'd like to send us, feel free to email them to purpose at storyforge.co and we'd be delighted to answer any questions uh, you might have. So we're going to keep this pretty informal. We're going to try and address some critical issues that businesses are facing uh, now uh, and share with you some of the things we're seeing that are working and some of the challenges that we're also encountering with the clients that we're working with. So let's kick this off by talking about the big elephant in the room that it's not business as usual anymore, is it? So everything has changed. I don't need to remind everybody of that. Uh, what really has changed for businesses, Haley, beyond the trying to keep the lights on? Yeah, well, I can't approach things the same way anymore. Yeah, I think there may be three different uh, things that have changed. The first one is just due to the nature that businesses are just pieces of paper in uh, in most places in this country, um, filed away in a, in a in a drawer somewhere in Delaware, uh, in the state of Delaware, until you put people in them. So businesses are people. And people, regardless of where they are in the world, are all on some stage of a journey along the change curve. So I think the most important thing for us to remember at this time is that everyone's in a different place on that journey. Um, you know, we, both of us, Barry and I, we are fortunate to have friends and family and colleagues all over the world. And so we have watched this uh, trajectory be different for different people. So friends and friends, friends in Spain, uh, came to the conclusion about what this was a lot uh, a lot earlier uh, than many of the other countries where we have friends and colleagues. And so I think recognizing that um, the business that you're talking to, your customers, your employees, depending on where they are and just depending on who they are as people might be in different places. So that kind of mindset is the first thing I think that um, that has changed and we need to be aware of. And then the second is just structural. So um, the businesses that we talk to, the businesses that we work with are in different industries, different businesses that have been affected differently by this pandemic. Um, some have seen um, interesting areas of opportunity. Uh, some have seen uh, incredible drastic dynamic change um, in their industry and in their marketplace and with their customers. So everyone's in a different place. Um, there are certain things that are very personalized. Um, but then the third thing I think that's important to remember is there's some things that just haven't changed. <laughs> it's not business as usual, but there's certain fundamental human needs that still exist and maybe exist even more in this time. Yeah, so let's dive into that a little bit. So a lot of our work is helping businesses figure out what is that meaning? What is the thing bigger than the product that they sell? And it would seem to me that never has that been more important for a business to know. We've both talked about uh, coming across ads mm -hmm. online of Tone, from tone deaf businesses who are out there selling their product as if nothing had ever happened or we're not in a different world or a changed world. Yeah. So this meaning, this kind of universal meaning we're all seeking, um, people still need something bigger than the product and service. There's a, hu there's a human need beyond the thing that, that, that uh, businesses are selling or offering, isn't there? That, that it would seem like now is the time to figure out what do we mean beyond selling something? How are we meaningful and why should anybody care that we as a business exist, right? 
Yeah, yeah, it's 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 like the the dial on our search for meaning has gone up to eleven. Yeah, in the last yeah. couple of weeks, our our patience with inauthenticity has gone down just as dramatically. I think that the all of our BS meters are on high alert right now, and so any messages, advertising, um, even business development um, that would have seemed uh, perfectly normal and natural to come out three weeks ago, even two weeks ago now is either falling on deaf ears or worse yet sounding tone deaf. Right, right. So we often talk about this bigger vision that most business owners, entrepreneurs are driven by. They're not driven primarily by making money, uh, mm -hmm. which is good considering the time we're in right now where it's a challenge to make uh, to make some money. But um, there's, there's this bigger driver that we've all had when we started our business. And it doesn't matter the economic climate that we started the business in, whether that was good or bad, there's always this bigger driver. And that can be forgotten about or easily lost now when we're dealing with firefighting and making sure that the lights stay on. Um, let's talk a little bit about the importance of having a bigger thing that we're working towards yeah. so that we know what to do in today's climate. Yeah, I'm so glad you, you asked that and that you used that specific phrase, keeping the lights on. Um, because we know, and we, we talk about this a lot in our business, that that profit is inherently in itself meaningless, but that purpose without a profit is just a dream. So we know that to survive as a business, to meet the needs of our customers, to meet the needs of our employees, to sustain ourselves, we have to have revenue coming in. We have to have cash flow. But it's just not a reason enough to exist. And uh, in normal times, uh, that is a, an insight that we try to help our, our clients and our customers have, this insight that, that profit alone cannot be the driving force of your business or your touchstone. Otherwise, you make really poor decisions. And unfortunately, this time that we're in is creating um, a very natural human instinct to retreat, to go to a place of fear, and to try to do business with this idea that we have to keep the lights on. And when we come from that place of fear, we make really um, silly decisions sometimes. <laughs> and uh, it's a really, really hard thing right now to transition from that place of fear to a place of abundance. But the opportunity to do that is really driven by our filters that we use for our thinking. If we have articulated a vision that's bigger than profitability, a purpose that's bigger than profitability, if we know who we are at our core, we know our beliefs that guide us and drive us, and we know the reasons why we got into this business in the first place, it can free us perhaps of some of that fear um, and allow us to expand into more creative places with our business. So how, how should a business think about their approach to connecting with both customers and employees today. And, and we've heard over the last few weeks talking to our customers, our clients, that there are challenges that they're facing with, for example, employees who are saying, some employees have been sharing that they don't know why it's worth it anymore. What are they working towards? Like, who cares? Like, isn't the world going to end tomorrow? Why should I care about where I work? Or we've got uh, individuals and, and customers uh, who are very busy in their own lives, taking care of their families in new in a new with a new landscape and new sets of challenges how, what should a business do or think about today to be able to kind of cut through that clutter but also to make a connection despite the noise yeah it's there is this innate human desire i think that we all have to help people in whatever we do whatever business we're in whatever industry we want we want to be of use and we want to be helpful um, and what um, some of our viewers might not be able to see, but underneath the, uh, the live stream button there, on um, the top left-hand corner of the screen is a, is a button that says, Can't Stop Columbus or Can't Stop CBUS. Um, that's this amazing organization of people that came out of nowhere in the last two weeks saying, hey, we want to help our city. We want to help, um, help our city become better. And they're tapping into that human need that we have to help, to be of use, um, to be of service to other people. Businesses can tap into that same need um, if they use vision and purpose and beliefs as a filter for their thinking, if they use that why of their business as a filter. Um, so let me give you an example. Um, I heard of two different hair salons in the last two weeks um, here in the city where I live in Columbus, Ohio, where that symbol is from, who took very dramatically different approaches to connecting 
with their customers and with their employees uh, during this time. So one owner of a hair salon sent out a bunch of messages on social media to customers, asking them, imploring them, in fact, directing them not to color their own hair. <laughs> now, Barry, you have a great head of hair with Thank great you. color, so we don't have this problem, but for a lot of us who do color our hair, we are about to go through a very significant emotional crisis. <laughs> the roots coming in. And uh, this, this particular salon owner said, if you color your own hair at home, it's basically a disservice. You are being disloyal to your hairstylist, disloyal to this, uh, this particular salon. So go gray, let the roots come in, and, and then come and, and pay us to do it when, when this is all over. So that's Salon A. Salon B sent a similar note out to their customers, but said, hey, we know everybody's suffering. You know, we're suffering, you're suffering. This is a terrible time. Here's what we've decided to do. We're gonna mix up your color, your specific color. We're gonna put it into a touch-up pen. And we're, you call us, you let us know, we'll put the order in. And then at a specific time, you can drive by our salon and we're gonna hand it to you through the window. So you don't even need to come in. We're gonna get through this together. We want you to be able to touch up your own hair. And we're looking forward to you being our customers again at the end of this. So to me, that is the difference between a business using their purpose and their vision and their greater why as a filter for their decision-making about what they're going to do during this crisis, yeah. support yeah. their customers and fulfill their purpose. Another right. one, using fear and just trying to keep the lights on and thinking about profitability. So it's that yeah. mindset for me. Right. That reminds me of the difference just between long-term thinking and short-term thinking. So mm. like we're going through a massive economic and world shift right now, which should cause every business to reconsider their how, how they go about the day to day. So these two examples of the hair salon are great because you have a choice of what you do now, like how you go about your business, but what shouldn't change is the end goal, like towards what, like, what is that vision? What are we working towards? Because this isn't going to be the only blip on the horizon for your business. It's probably, there's probably been others, maybe not as dramatic as we're experiencing or many businesses are experiencing today, but it does speak to the need to have a little bit more clarity about how we make decisions. Mm -hmm. And it isn't that a challenge though with the with the profitability with, with the need to pay our bills how do we how do businesses find the peace of mind to step back and say okay yeah. there's a bigger picture here long term well it's i think that's, that's where that creativity comes in um so i spoke with another business yesterday one of our clients a large energy company uh, that found a way to retool a significant portion of their employees during this time, people who would normally be going door to door and selling services are, have now been retooled to something else because the company recognizes the importance of their employees um, in their longer term vision. To your point, in this longer term view of the sustainability of the business. So they're doing everything possible to take care of them. Um, and, and with those two hair salons, which hair salon would you rather work for? Right. You know, people go into into business into careers. Yes, yeah, some people just need a paycheck and they want to take that paycheck and have their nine to five job. Yep. But the majority of us go into our our work lives because we're passionate about it. We're passionate about whatever that industry is that we're in, and we want to make a difference. So, right. by tapping into that that human need, I think we um, we both serve our customers, serve our employees, and serve the company itself by by enabling people to be more creative, to find creative ways um, to make that bottom line, to bring in that cash flow and bring in that revenue. Um, I think one of the things that can be, unfortunately, another knee-jerk reaction that we have as leaders is in times of crisis to retreat from our teams, right? To go into the boardroom or to sit by ourselves in our corner office and think, this is my responsibility, the weight of the world is on my shoulders. When in fact, it's a wonderful time to open ourselves up to our teams and to our employees. They have experience, they have ideas, they have creativity. Engage them, um, be open and transparent about where the business is. And I think, Barry, you would probably say as well as I would, that in our experience, remarkable ideas can come out of those teams if they're tapped into correctly. 100% agree. And it seems to be that intersection of creativity and meaning. So. Mm. Because uh, I, I think we need a filter for thinking how in this time can we be even more meaningful? The hair salon is a great example of being more meaningful, like they matter more. And you ask the question, which one would you want to do business with? Because of my head of hair, I don't want to do business with either of them, but others will choose the one that 
in the time of crisis was more meaningful. And I saw a picture on Twitter during the week of a very happy man in Ireland who uh, was holding up two pints of Guinness that had some clear, like a cling film over the top of them that had been delivered by the local pub to his house. <laughs> and in this time when most pubs are closed, he was able, the owner was able to put two pints of Guinness in a taxi and have them delivered to this man's house. But yeah. he, he shared how much he appreciated the business going the extra mile, mm -hmm. being creative, but also being meaningful. That man wanted, he needed yeah. uh, to be reminded of, of a different time, you know? Yeah, well, and Barry, as you've talked about many times, it's not the beer inside the glass. Right. No. Nope. You know, that gentleman, it wasn't the actual Guinness. He could he could probably have ordered Guinness online, have it shipped to his house, open it up and put it in his own pint glass. But the yeah. fact that his pub was thinking of him, remembering him, making that connection with him, that's the kind of meaning that I think um, people are looking for. You know, yeah. we, we are very highly attuned to businesses taking advantage of us right now. Absolutely. For businesses being opportunistic. Um, we are also just as attuned to businesses actually showing and demonstrating the amount of care that they have for us. Whether we're employees, whether we are um, community members, other partners, vendors, stakeholders, um, all of our stakeholders, This, if we have this orientation to understanding the value that we create for our stakeholders and we use that as a filter for our decision making, um, that's where that creativity, I think, can really come through. Absolutely. Well, it, has there ever been a more opportune time? I, I hate the word opportunity in such a climate, but has there ever been a better time to demonstrate how meaningful you as a business truly are? Because I, like I said earlier, we've rarely, rarely come across a business that has been set up with the sole purpose of making money. There was always something bigger, whether it was to address a need in the world or make a better life for themselves or their family or their community. There's never been a better chance now to demonstrate truly what you're in the business of. Your products will sell themselves if you can create that connection, that deep, meaningful connection to your point when we're being, when our, our BS filters and radars have never been more attuned and, and wary of yeah. what's out there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a really critical time to do so. You know, we've been the last seven, eight, 10 years, you know, you know, make, make your um, your distinction on the timeline as you will, but we've had a really great, strong, booming economy and right. really great, strong, booming economies can mask a lot of problems. They can mask a lot of weak positions, a lot mm -hmm. of uh, uh, businesses that have built up as commodities and are growing because they're a commodity and they're priced right. You know, coming out of this um, particular crisis that we're in, um, we are not going to see that kind of abundance for a while. There's going to be scarcity. People are going to be very thoughtful about how and where they're investing their money and with which companies. So I can't think of a more important time for businesses to get back to the fundamentals and to really ask the hard, difficult questions of themselves of who are we and why do we exist? And what are those things about our company, our fundamental DNA that has existed for us since the beginning that should never change? And then what are the things about our company, maybe our how, our strategies, our tactics, our approaches um, that do need to change um, and that must uh, change so that we can uh, come out of this and survive and even thrive um, on those, those fundamentals of meaning that we had at our, at our inception. And every business is going to be facing competition as they have before and businesses who are rethinking and retooling and re-examining how they operate so it does seem like if if we as business owners aren't rethinking or aren't articulating why we are relevant, why we are meaningful, why anyone should care from our employees to our customers, yeah. there's a great chance that we're going to be outsmarted, outwitted, outpaced by those who are spending the time to think about how to be more meaningful. Because, boy, in these times, we have never needed more meaning. We've never needed more hope. We've never needed to hold on to something bigger. And I know that we're going to flock to those businesses, just like we do with individuals. We flock to people who take care of us and who we feel a connection with and we build a relationship with. It's really no different than uh, really no different with a business. So how are we finding, what are we doing to think about how meaningful we truly are? Yeah, yeah. I think there, are, in my experience, so we've both, um, I think over the last few weeks, spoken with scores of, of business leaders and entrepreneurs. And they're falling into three categories for me. One category is paralyzed. 
Mm. And perhaps we all at some point, whether it was for an hour or a day or a week, sat in that space where uh, the amount of change around us paralyzed us. We were unable to think about anything other than doing the business exactly the way we've always done it and hoping for um, uh, the same result. Um, then we have businesses that have moved into, um, as we talked about earlier, have gone from paralyzed to a space of fear <laughs> and are similarly unable to think differently about their business. I think the third category of leaders um, that I've been talking with on the, on the past week have had this realization and have come to their own sense of clarity about what needs to be done and are almost energized by it. Um, I think you know, a lot of our business entrepreneurs and founders that we've worked with are very ambitious business people. They love a challenge. Um, and even in, in times that are this difficult um, and this uncertain, um, knowing that having clarity um, can actually be the thing that guides them through the chaos um, and that makes the uncertain uh, less uncertain um, has given them a little twinkle in their eye, uh, interestingly. Yeah, yeah. I would agree with that 100%. Um, I've always marveled that irrespective of the economic conditions, good businesses have always come through. Great businesses have been made in those times, especially in the down times when they've taken advantage or capitalized on the opportunity not to just profit, but to be more meaningful or to to, to connect uh, to connect more. And, and good businesses always survive. But I think, yeah, that difference is is having that articulation of, why you are a good business why should anybody care beyond that thing that you're selling exactly um, so so very to to get that clarity so we know that businesses need clarity during this time we know that that is the opportunity that that businesses have to to rethink and reinvent and tap into those strains of creativity what do businesses what should businesses be doing right now what are those few things that can get that clarity for them well we know when we when we work with clients it doesn't matter what industry they're in what size they are where they're located the 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 leaders we've we found have always had a bigger reason for existing or the business has had a bigger reason for existing and that typically has come from the founders having a bigger goal a bigger vision that's not always being clear to everybody in the organization and certainly as businesses grow and as they get yeah they get more complex as they grow it becomes harder for everyone in the organization to understand what the owner, the founder is working towards or why he or she makes decisions a certain way. So I think the, it, it's important to, to do that brain dump to take out of the heads of the founders why we're doing this. And it may seem like everybody should know this. Surely I've been talking about this for years as a founder, but the reality is that unless it's being re stated every day it's very difficult for employees and team members to understand why we're doing things a certain way so i think the first thing is for us to uh is to examine and determine what is driving us to do what we're doing what is the ultimate goal of this of this business beyond just making money uh, and starting with that now there's a whole process of getting to that isn't there we know that there's there's interrogation and prodding and poking to extract the answers from the founder's head but the first thing is to understand yeah what is this bigger thing we're working towards uh, and from there we can we can have a conversation about the beliefs the 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 non-negotiables that a founder has i'm sure everybody watching has beliefs about life about the world about business there are things they would and wouldn't do they make decisions naturally based on those beliefs, but those beliefs aren't always understood by everyone in the organization. And it may be frustrating to the founder to see others making decisions in ways that they never would. Again, comes back to the articulation and the, the, the yeah, writing down what it is that we stand for and stand against so that our team members know. When we have this vision for the world or this vision for the future that we're trying to work towards and we have a framework in terms of our beliefs, it then becomes easier to determine how we're going to get to this thing. Uh, now, we need an understanding of what our stakeholders need, our employees need, what our customers need, what our partners need, our communities need. But when we take all of these pieces together, we're able to determine how we behave and how we act today. So we talked about the knee-jerk reaction to profit or to keeping the lights on, which for many is essential. But there's a way to be I think efficient with decision making and swift with decision making in a way that works towards a greater goal and also accounts for the needs of those we're serving rather than just the one criteria of well we need money in the door 
because everyone is trying to get money in the door, but how are we building for beyond Tuesday or beyond Wednesday? Are we building something bigger? So really the, the first step in any of this is that hard work of articulation, isn't it? Of determining what it is we're trying to achieve, what we stand for and stand against, and then how uniquely we're going to uh, go about uh, getting there. And the new world we're in over the last few weeks is going to change our how. It's going to change the things we do day to day to get there. But how are we making those decisions, I think, is most important. Yeah. And I think it's also, it's human nature to focus on the how. Yeah. <laughs> Times like this, when we're, when we're under this kind of stress, focusing on the tactics can feel really, really good. Right. right. I had yeah. a to-do list. I checked off all things on my to-do list. I have been successful yeah. today, right? It's, it's normal human nature. We all always fall into that. But, uh, but the tactics um, are not going to get us to where we need to be. So what got us here to this moment is not going to get us there to where we need to yep. be. We need to rethink things. And rethinking things at the tactical level is just doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Um, right. You really right. have to go back three or four steps to have new insights, to really challenge our thinking, to, um, to as you said, poke and prod and really question ourselves um, to get that kind of clarity that we need so that we can make the decisions about tactics that are the right decisions. So we talk about the meaningful story of a business all the time. This, this, mm -hmm. The four or five elements of a business that are documented, articulated, cast in stone, uh, that become the decision-making filter for everything in the organization, for hiring, for marketing, for product development, for expansion, for contraction. So this meaningful story of vision, of purpose, of beliefs, of stakeholder needs, um, if it's not in place today, now is our opportunity as business owners to put that in place. Uh, and what I'd love to do over the coming live streams that we'll do every Wednesday and Friday and over the coming weeks is like break that down bit by bit. What, how do we go about that? How can any business arrive at their own meaningful story. And um, if anyone has, who's watching or who wa who's watching live or who's watching the replay has any questions as we go through this, then we'd love to answer them. And we'd love to give our thoughts based on the businesses we've worked with and our experience over the past few years in addressing the challenges of the story of connecting, of building meaningful relationships and connections with your customers and your employees. We'd love to answer those. Um, and you can feel free to send your questions to us directly. If you don't want to put them in the comments, you can email them to us uh, at purpose at storyforge.co. But what I'd love to do is, is take the time each, each live stream to break down the steps and address the various challenges that each of our, um, each of our viewers are, are dealing with on a, on a day to day basis. And I, I know it's a, it's a fast changing world uh, that's uh, bringing new challenges on a day to, on a day to day basis. Um, so we're going to go live every Wednesday and every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern. We're going to go live on Facebook. We're going to go live on YouTube. Uh, we were trying to think about how do we help, how do we become more meaningful? So taking our own medicine at StoryForge, how do we become more meaningful knowing that there are many businesses out there that are worried about survival and are worried about uh, retaining staff, are worried about con maintaining connection with staff that are now remote and dispersed and distributed around the world? What can we do? And so we thought that this is the best thing we can possibly do right now, which is to open up our office hours, share our process, share our approach, share some successes uh, and some challenges that we've experienced with, with clients over the years, and maybe highlight a few of those specifically, and then take your questions and your um, thoughts and comments to help you arrive at this place of meaning, a place of clarity that's going to help you navigate the ever-changing uh, world we're in today. Uh, Haley, what would you add to that? I think that's great. I think we'll, we'll take questions at any time between now and Friday. So as you think about things, if you're watching this video on a replay and a question occurs to you, feel free to send it to purpose at storyforge.co, um, purpose at storyforge.co or, or Barry or, or, um, or my email directly. And we'll be happy to cover that when we're back with you. Um, Wednesdays and Fridays at 11 a.m. Um, on the channels that Barry mentioned. So just thank you. Thank you to everyone. Thank you to our clients um, and our colleagues and our partners, everyone in the community that's reached out to offer support, um, to seek support. We have to be there for each other right now. We have to um, figure out what our superpowers are and how we can use them to help everyone around us. Um, we're really only going to get in through this whole thing together. Um, we're stronger together. We can go farther together. 
um, if we all um, really share what we have, share our gifts and, and share the things that we can do to support each other. So just thank you to everyone who's reached out to us. Yeah, um, and we're, we're super appreciative of that. And I would just kind of leave with one thought that I have, which is that while it might not be business as usual, there's a bigger vision or reason that drove you to start your business. There's a need in the world that still exists despite this. In fact, maybe the need is even greater now. It's not the time for us to retreat. It's the time for us to get closer and closer and, and move um, toward that vision because there's more people need help and need, need what you're selling and what you're providing and how you serve the services you offer than ever before. So hopefully we can help uh, bring some clarity to how you might do that. Uh, and we're here to serve you uh, for uh, as long as you need us through this crazy time. So with, with that, uh, we'll, we'll end this week's bro or today's broadcast. We'll be back on Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern, and we'll have a, a whole set of topics that we'll talk through to hopefully help you, guide you through this, uh, this unusual time. So thanks for watching. Uh, thanks, Haley, for jumping in with me, and uh, we will uh, see everybody on Friday. Thanks, everyone. Be safe.